We're gonna have a discussion about principles, ethics, and wealth development, and how you can level up. I've made a few videos, and I've been looking at the comments, and I want to give you guys something to think about. And this is going to be very, very helpful for those of you who wanna level up and understand how the world works. So with that, let's get into the sponsor. This episode of Hustlers Kung Fu is brought to you by Hustlers Kung Fu Life Skills, AKA Hustlers Kung Fu University, where we teach you how to manage money, where we teach you how to grow wealth, we teach you to start businesses, we teach you how to structure your company. And right now, all of the courses are in H undergrad, so grab that special if you want it. Let's get into principles and ethics. What is the purpose of having ethics? Uh, I was having a conversation with someone who went on and like all of the billionaires, they are ruthless, they don't have ethics. We have a population of 7.6 billion people on the planet and we only have 26 billionaires, 2,600 billionaires. That ain't even a, that's, that's a fraction of a fraction of a percent of the population base. So becoming a billionaire takes more than being ruthless. It is a really rare event because you're gonna to have to create something that has critical mass. So being ruthless, just scandalous and doing whatever it takes, that's, it takes a lot more than that to become a billionaire. Because if you want to do a case study on having no ethics, no morals, just sit down and talk to someone who was recently incarcerated, folks who did whatever they needed to do. If you have principles and ethics this elevates you because one of the first things that it's going to enable you to do is it's going to enable you to have trust. People with no principles, no ethics, and will do anything, trust no one because they themselves are not trustworthy. And that's a really big thing because in this life, if you want to get rich, you're going to have to trust people. You're gonna to have to build a team. If you are one of those people who can't trust anyone that's consistently looking over your shoulder and thinks everyone's out to get you, you're gonna be paranoid and you're gonna have mental issues. So having principles, having a code of ethics, having a way to run your life enables you to participate in this system. And let's talk about this system because it is a system. There's a system for building wealth and it isn't about hustling, it isn't about selling ice to Eskimos. The principle is rooted in having a personal philosophy where you're not gonna do anything for a dollar. That's one of the things, because I, I see many people, like with this free government money, there are people who, based upon their presentation on YouTube, they shouldn't be applying for this government money, but they're applying for this government money because they have loose standards and loose morals. When you have loose standards and loose morals, that makes it hard for you to have trust. And one of the things from a psychological viewpoint, you're gonna to need to be able to trust people. And this going back to, if you're not an individual that can be trusted, you will not trust anyone. And that's gonna make it so hard for you to do what you need to do, gain, to get the gains of wealth. Because one of the first principles is truth, living and understanding truth. If you lie to yourself, you will lie to everyone else. This is one of the biggest issues that's going on in the world today because we have people who don't operate from a standpoint of truth and we have a large segment of the population that is paranoid. They're paranoid that the government's gonna get them. They're paranoid that the 1% is gonna get them because they have no bearing. They're just, well, you know, these 5G towers, they're giving people the Rona and other madness, just other madness. And when you have principles, because this is why it was easy for me to create the disruptive mail. There's a guidance of the principles. Number one, get your economics. Number two, get your body. Number three, get your mental and spirit together. Number four, date submissive women. It's a system. But here's where many people go wrong. They don't want to follow a system. They want to allow their proclivities to lead them. And many people have very bad proclivities, a situation where their basic nature isn't conducive to building wealth. And this is where many people who don't have principles, who don't have ethics, this is where they fall short. 
those proclivities lead them astray. They get in themselves into certain situations that like Bailey, if y'all remember Bailey, she was one of the chicks I used to date. This girl had low end post control, was constantly getting arrested, had charges for selling weed, all kinds of stuff because she defaulted to her lower proclivities time and time again. And this made it very hard for her to be successful because she got caught up in her feelings. Well, I'm gonna sell weed, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna run from the cops. And this chick consistently was getting in trouble. And this is where having no guiding principles, no guidelines, no framework to operate will get you. And this is where many people are. There's a reason that there's only a small percentage of America that is rich. There's a reason. And there are many people who will tell you that you can do this one little thing and do, do this and get rich. Getting rich is a process. It's a system. And the system is rooted in service. You do have people who rent seek, who are day traders, who do Forex, who don't provide any value in the world, and they make a lot of money. But these folks have also lost a lot of money getting their skill level to what it is today. And this is where a lot of people want to be. They don't want to be responsible for employees. They don't want to be responsible for business. They want to make a lot of money, live a good life, and never provide any value to the world. It's possible. It's just very, very hard. It's just really, really hard because you're trying to cheat the system. You're trying to get a lot out the system without putting a lot in. And typically that just doesn't work for most people. If you see someone on YouTube who's a successful Forex trader or a successful day trader, look at their background and you will see that they've been working at this for many, many years and they put in a lot of time and a lot of hours. They didn't do this in a month or two. It took them a while to figure out how to work their system to get this money. Part of being successful is creating and operating in a system and the system has rules like the storage auction system. When I was in the storage auction business, I noticed that there were some people who were ethical and there were some people who were not. And typically this is how gentleman agreement started. Like I won't bid against you if you don't bid against me. And there were people who kept their word and there were people who broke their word because I, I know we had this agreement, but it was such a nice unit. And when you break trust, you damage future opportunities because uh, when Bobby, I've told a story like Bobby came up with like, hey, I won't bid against you, you don't bid against me. Because I had been digging in his ass with my bids. I've been running up units that I knew he liked on intentionally because that's how the game is played. Until my whole time in the store shocks business, once he came to me, made that agreement, he never went back on his word, never. The people who would enter into these agreements and then break it because the unit was so special, they ended up losing because I had one guy who did that to me and I went after him for a year. I caused him pain for a year. And uh, he came up to me and said, you know what? Going against you on that unit wasn't really worth this because I've lost money all year long. I was like, hey, that was the plan. You're going to screw me. You're going to come up with this agreement and break your word. You have no honor. I am going to go out. I'm going to castigate you. I'm going to hunt you down because I had the reputation for going after people who went at, who, who, who messed me over. I remember there, there was one, <laughs> this auction, this new person came up and, and this chick was like, don't, don't piss him off because you'll never get anything cheap. I've seen him do it. And I, I developed a reputation for doing that kind of stuff. And part of the system is you must operate with a level of honor in the system. You cannot keep like the mafia. Many people have all of these myths about the mafia, but the mafia has a lot of rules. And if you break the rules, it's going to cost you your life. As long as you operate within the system, you play by the rules, you do what you're supposed to do, you're good. But the minute you start breaking rules and breaking rank, that's when you run into problems. And this is ego. Ego is a big part because I get a lot of folks who don't have any online training platforms, who don't have a YouTube channel, and they think their opinion is just as valid as mine with no proven track record of success. And that's ego. And there are some people who's like, you know, this guy, he's got a lot of stuff going on. Did a little research and they were impressed and they listened to me. But the people who are egotistical, they feel that we're on the same level, even though they don't have my results. And that's 
part of one of the reasons that they will never be as successful as they could be because they don't know their place in society. And this is part of the system. You have a place in the system. You're either at the bottom of the system, you're in the middle of the system, or you're at the top of the system. And if you don't know your place and you don't know how to act, the system is going to punish you. It is going to knock you out. This is one of the things for someone who dealt in the real world, started a real business, had to compete with people with money in an auction based system. I, I, I started to see that why the people who were at the top were at the top. Everyone who was a top level storage auction dude that made an agreement with me never broke their word. They never went back on their word. And then the mid tier folks, they would do it all the time. And I, I just could tell that it's like, you just lying. And a lot of times I wouldn't either enter into an agreement with them. I would just keep bidding because I didn't trust them. Because those who can't trust can't be trusted. That is something, if you take nothing from this, if you cannot be, if you can't trust anyone, more likely you can't be trusted. That is a serious, serious lesson in life that I've learned. Because the people who are paranoid, who are sketchy, who are always out there, they don't have a lot of good outcomes. Because, you know, I have people who are like, hey, you know, this benevolence, you know, this morality that you should have, it serves you well. It serves you well. This is why I've been able to do what I've been doing for 10 years. I have a track record. And one of the things that happens is many people like meet Kevin. He went after Manny and he's gotten roasted, not by in the comments, but someone made a video about him calling him a noob, a rookie saying not what he, cause see Kevin doesn't know his place. Kevin is a YouTuber. He's going after people for clout chasing to build his channel. Typically people who do that, they're going to run into someone and it's not going to work out well and they're going to be disappointed. And this was, you know, cause Kevin, he went back to making stimulus check videos. Cause if you don't understand how YouTube works, hot topics get a lot of views. Uh, Clearview tax uh, revenue has literally got a hundred thousand subscribers in two weeks because you know, for him to talk about the stimulus bill, it's within his channels framework. So it's not going to hurt him, but mark my words that people who are jumping around, who are talking about the stimulus bill, and that's not part of their channel. Cause you know, any CPA or tax person who's talking about the stimulus, that's fine. But from a long term, you know, perspective. And once again, this is about operating within the framework. YouTube is going to punish those channels because the topics, because once you start layering on so many different topics, your channel will start to lose steam. Like check out Ty Lopez's channel and whenever he puts out a video and see how many views he gets, his channel is going through a similar process as mine because it's just too many topics and it's unfocused. And this is the system. Once again, you must operate within the system to be successful and, you know, becoming ultra wealthy. If you're going to have a conversation about me, that's the last thing you need to do, because if you're not ultra wealthy, why are you even talking about the ultra wealthy? That is a rare, rare set of circumstances that takes more than a person being ruthless to get over that hill. It takes a certain level special circumstances. Take Bill Gates, Steve Jobs. If they were to start those businesses today, as brilliant as they were, they would not be billionaires. It wouldn't have went that way because people aren't using computers. They caught a, they caught it, they caught a wave that we as a society was moving to computers and home personal computers and, and the, the whole corporate world was adapting computers and they caught that wave. Without that wave, they wouldn't have become as rich as they did. And this is one of the things that you will understand when you're building and creating, because one of the ways that I'm writing is online education. Online education is not going nowhere anytime soon. And anyone who is creating courses that help people, creating value, creating systems, because uh, I'm going to do part of the critical thinking course, a section about ethics and the principles because it's very, very important. And also look at the people who don't have any principles on, on some level, you don't really trust them. 
Like, you know, a lot of people will go watch Meet Kevin for some of his good content, but most of us don't think that much of him because he has no principles, he has no guiding lights. He's doing a debased form of building his YouTube channel. And we all know it, and we all look at it, and we all judge him for it. But at some point, that's going to catch up with him. I'm going to tell you a story about me, one I've never told. I was a white-collar criminal. This was when I was in the boarding house and I learned how to do some scams and it bothered me because I would do it and I was really successful and I was in a period of need. And this is when my character began to emerge because I had this special set of skill sets and in my darkest hour, I didn't default to that because there was one time there was uh, all of us were in the house and they were trying to get us to go in on this drug deal and I just didn't do it. And this was at the point where I had stopped the scamming. I just cut it off. I never did it again. And actually, I even paid the dude back some money. During that period, that's when my true character came out because I had this ability to do something, but I chose not to do it. And I know that discipline served me well because I went and worked these crappy jobs. I did what I needed to do. And this is one of the things that helped me breakthrough was meditation because one night I was hungry I needed some money and I was thinking about scamming I was like man if I just did this hit a good lick I have money I could be up out of here and I was like don't do it and I'm gonna tell you why I didn't do it I never developed the habit of scamming this is one of the things that happens to people whatever career path you get in becomes a habit and this is why recidivism is so high with criminals because that's all they know how to do. And that's their special skill set. And I was like, I don't want this to be my life. I don't want to go out harming innocent people. So I just stopped it. And I never did it again. And then I got on a good trend because, you know, some people would say how I got my job at Renegrate was a little unethical. I don't think it was unethical. I was playing the game to play the game. And I've been on an upward path ever since. I never got back into that bad situation because I didn't go back to scamming and I didn't keep doing that stuff because I know the long-term consequences of that were going to be horrible. And I got out of it, I stayed out of it, and I leveled up. And this is why when you know, people's like, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. If you are doing something that you know that is derogatory and harmful and you keep doing it, Sooner or later, you're going to run into that wall. Sooner or later, it's inevitable. And I just saw the story. I was living in this neighborhood, and I just saw all of these people living these the lives of debauchery. And I actually, there was this one girl I knew who was a crackhead, and I literally watched her, watched her metamorphosize into this thing. Because she kept doing crack, and her appearance just got worse and worse and worse. And she started to look like this monster. And I was just sitting there like, this is what happens when you keep doing bad things. This is what happens when you don't have that framework. This is what happens when you have no morals, no ethics, no principles. You descend into chaos. And I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to educate you guys that that's the way to go. Because right now, we're going to have a lot of people who are going to go through a lot of pain. We're going to have many, many people who are going to go through a lot of pain, they're going to have a lot of hardship, they're going to have many, many bad moments. And some of these people are going to default to something criminal, illegal, because they feel like, I got to do what I got to do. And I'm telling you, you don't have to do it. You Once again, you don't have to do it. You just have to align your life in a certain manner where you build positivity and resources and reservoirs of cash so when the bad times come, you're not out there trying to take advantage of someone. Because this is one of the things I feel that's going to come. Right now, they're going to try to open up the country. Uh, I, I feel it in about four weeks away because the economic carnage. Because once unemployment gets to 30%, I feel they're just going to like, hey, we're going to let this virus do what it's going to do. Because people, because it's like we've got more people who are being harmed by sitting at home then we have people who are being harmed by the virus. And it's gonna come down to that kind of decision like, 
which group of people are going to be more harmed? Are these average Americans going to be harmed or the people who get the virus and die? And based upon the math, there are less people who are getting the virus and dying. And that, that's just going to be the calculation. But before we get there, it's going to be a rocky, horrible road. You're going to have some people who are going to perish. And they're going to have some people, because there's a group of ec people who were economically fragile before this happened. They didn't have any money. They didn't have a good job. They didn't have no cash. They didn't have no savings. And it's just going to get worse for those people. It's going to continue to be worse. And they're going to develop these bad habits because I broke, because I never let the scamming become a habit. I only did it a few times and I was really successful. And I know that with my intellect, I would have been a really successful scammer. But that whole jail thing, that, that jail thing, I'm not built for jail. And I knew that at some point in the journey, that was a possibility. That was enough to get me back on the straight and narrow and running my life in a positive, productive manner. And so many people don't make those kind of decisions. They will stay on that bad lane and then they will wreck and they will like wonder why. Because I'm trying to tell you, because, you know, there, there are many people who feel that ethics and principles are something just for suckers. You know, like I said, I have this saying, don't hate the player, don't hate the game, learn the rules so you can win. And part of that is from an ethical standpoint, because I believe in doing certain things. I don't believe in doing illegal, illegal stuff like selling drugs, uh, prostitution. I don't believe in that. But I will do what I call the illegal illegal. Like, you shouldn't have a garage sale X amount of times. That ain't really hurting anyone. That's not causing any harm. I'm just having too many garage sales. I'll do some stuff like that all the time. But that's within the framework of my principle. And so hopefully you got some out of this little talk. And there's another video right here. Be sure to watch it. It's gonna be good for you.